Roxanne, uh, my dear Rockstar, I'm so happy to connect with you and to share with my audience the example and the inspiration that you've been showing up with uh, for the last few months. Uh, you're someone that I felt so blessed to be able to help and just would like to start by asking you, can you tell me a little bit about where you were in your life emotionally when we first connected? That's part A of the question and part B is what made you say, yes, I want to do this. Let's work together. Oh my goodness. Yes, I can. <laughs> and that's a, then that's a, that's a, you know, it's, it's a tough place to go to because it was, a, it was a difficult time when we met. And I remember that very, very well. Where was I? Uh, I was um, heartbroken, I think, is <laughs> where I was. I had ended a long-term relationship that had been tumultuous, probably, um, yeah, pretty much straight through. And I had finally had the courage to end it. And by the time I met with you, I was probably about, I want to say like five, six months post-breakup and had been spending a lot of time just really taking care of myself and connecting with that broken heart and what I wanted to learn from it. Because I really, really, really wanted to not ever do that again. Mm. <laughs> so, yes. Um, and it was, you know, it was, I was, yeah, just in a place of probably wanting to be very patient with myself and uh, at the same time, wanting to kind of okay let's be done with this you know I'm, I'm i'm really done with being sad and kind of crying every day and all that stuff so um but it was also a, a great time and i had a sense that um which leads me to part b of your question i had a sense that it was it was it was time for more um and i had been connecting very deeply with myself and was very very grateful to get to a place where i could say things needed to change pretty significantly in my life. Mm -hmm. That this was this was not okay. This is not how the rest of my life was gonna go. I've been divorced. I had just ended a long term relationship and um yeah, things were kind of sucking and I was ready to make a change. And I remember very, very well talking with you and telling you how great my life was and how happy I was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I remember you calling bullshit. <laughs> like, like, okay, I don't know what happy means to you, but I'm looking at you and you're crying. And, uh, um, and having in that moment a sense of the difference between knowing my life was a blessing and knowing my life was good and experiencing it, experiencing that that what I, what I knew, experiencing that, feeling that in my heart and taking that out into the world because me that was showing up in the world was somebody who was heartbroken and probably really just protecting herself. And yeah, yeah. And I, I think that was probably what, um, yeah, I think that uh, recognizing that you were able to see that in me and call me out. I had a sense that um, that we could do the work that it would take for me to go a lot further into um, into where I really was and what I was producing in my life up until that point. So, yeah, I think that was the moment. <laughs> what would you say, uh, uh, Roxanne, were maybe a couple of the greatest insights or breakthroughs that you experienced? as a result of stepping into the work. One of the things that I tell everyone that I work with is, and I didn't used to do this before, now I do, is like, this is very hard. It's not easy, it's absolutely hard, it's worth it, but it's fucking hard. So when, what are some of the things that you went through that you felt were breakthroughs that allowed you to step into the kind of life that you have right now? Oh, um, I think one of the things, there, there are a couple of things that jump out in my mind early on. Um, one of them was seeing the disconnect between what I said I valued, mm. what my actions were. <laughs> that was um, that was painful. Uh, that it, it, it hurt because I think of myself as somebody who's so aware and so connected with myself 
and I'm kind of a, you know, like a lifetime learner. I'm a student. Like I love to learn and I'm always digging in deeper and exploring things. And to have that sense of such a blind spot in my very values, mm -hmm. what I said I valued versus how I acted, that that was that was a bit of a gut punch. And I would say another another one which was another gut punch, why we say this is hard. Um, so I mentioned that I was, you know, I was heartbroken. And probably mostly up until that point, early in our work, I was heartbroken over the relationship and what it wasn't versus what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And um, connecting deeply with the fact that that was the best I could produce at that time, mm -hmm. in that situation and at that time. That was sobering. That was sobering. Coming to terms with this wasn't something, it would, would have been easy to blame. You know, it wasn't, there was a lot wrong with that relationship and it was very comfortable and easy to place the blame. And to deal with it is blame. And mm -hmm. to place it somewhere else and he did this and he did that, in, you know, um, and he didn't do this and, you know, can you believe, can you believe? And uh, connecting deeply with myself and recognizing um, my choices <laughs> and where I was to accept that and allow that and continue to try to make that into something, you know, else was was sobering and painful. And I think it really goes to uh, what you're saying about the hard work. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, there was a time in our working together where it was finally time to let go. And I remember you were like so many women out there right now on that verge where you can go back for something that is not fulfilling you but you're hoping that it somehow might, or saying, I'm going to take the deepest leap of faith and know that there's something that's much more of a fit for what I want. Can you tell me that moment where you finally made the decision of letting go of that relationship that you could have maybe made work as somebody showed up again in your life and said, hey, can we make this work? And you said, no. I don't like, tell me about that, please. <laughs> oh, goodness, yeah. Um, so at that point, um, where I was continuing to hear from the ex-boyfriend and it was really just enough to mess me up. <laughs> it was, you know, it was a little bit like dangling, a, you know, uh, it was playing, it was playing on, it was picking up where I, I think that I was still really uh, kind of hurting about what it, what it wasn't versus what I had hoped for and kept making me think maybe it could be more, maybe it could be more. What was the moment that I decided? I think there were two big things that contributed to that. One, in just a really, really tactical term, burn was kind of showing up week in and week out and talking to you about stuff and going, oh my God, we're talking about the same <laughs> thing. This is not any different. And it's really, um, that stinks. Yeah. Okay, that's like, like I, what, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and the, you know, that part of that element too is, you know, the lovely, um, the lovely women that I got to connect with in our group and hear them. And it's, you know, it's a little easier sometimes when you hear somebody else and you go, that sounds really familiar. That sounds really familiar. And then I open up my <laughs> mouth and I go, Oh my God, that sounds really familiar. So, um, that kind of very, very honest, Knowing that there was never anything that was going to slide when we talked, I think helped keep that very front and center. Um, and the 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 other element of that was that I was beginning to feel what it felt like to love myself so deeply. <laughs> and um, like I said, you know, I. I I felt like I was getting there before we began to work, but that was like a, that was a, like a compassionate love for myself, which was what I needed at that time of feeling very, very heartbroken. But something else was coming out as we were working together. And that was like a, you know, um, passionate, um, vibrant love for myself. It wasn't like just a like, you know, it's okay, we're gonna get through this. It was like, look myself in the mirror and like the first thing the first reaction was oh my god i love you feeling oh your magic god. right your own magic awesome. <laughs> yes. 
want. And feeling that way, like, that was, that was the thing for me, Burn. That was what I wanted to get to. If a relationship came that fit the bill, that would be amazing and icing on the cake. But where I sat, that felt like that was, you know, that's out of my control. What's in my control is me and myself and how I connect with myself and how I live this life, this one precious life. And I just, that I, I was there. I was feeling that just that enthusiasm and passion for life that was so not present. And so it made it much, that was such a big step because it wasn't just saying cutting off contact with this person, yeah. it was saying, there's no room for any bullshit here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're someone who stepped into taking massive action week in and week out, and not without several disappointments, but you finally got to a point where you, you met someone really special that you've been with. He's been your, your man for many months now, and uh, you fell in love. Can you tell me more about the man that you're with and how this love has manifested itself in your life? Um, yeah, I, um, I, I didn't believe that men like him existed. Yeah, I really didn't. And, uh, you know, I, when I try to, uh, you know, tell people about, about him, I like, I like to summarize him. He's, um, the most amazing combination of of man like in, in the best possible sense of the word in you know uh in his in the way that he looks in, in the way that he protects in the way he protects me in the way that he protects what's dear to him mm. uh in the way that he is attentive and caring and then in addition to being this you know strong and honorable man that I respect so much for those things is that he's also so communicative and so expressive with me and so just right in lockstep with me. And, and that's been an amazing aspect of our relationship from, from day one. And we just celebrated um, almost a month ago, but we're, we're almost seven months together. Hmm. And continuing to really grow into that and both of us very very conscious and talking about how we grow together and how we build a life together and knowing that that's what we want with each other yeah. is um it feels like a fantasy but it's just it's very it's very very real and one of the things that we both talk about is understanding very well that neither one of us were capable of producing this relationship before we met each other. Hmm. And that's, that's pretty sobering. I mean, it would be easy to say, and sometimes I feel this way, like I feel a little sad that we, you know, didn't know each other sooner, <laughs> but I'm immediately present to me not too long ago could not have done this. Hmm. So we're very conscious of, you know, kind of the grace with which this all came together. What would you say has been the biggest impact of this new life, this new love and this new you, uh, you showing up with this level of passion, openness and radiance in the lives of your, your children, your two boys? Oh my goodness. Hmm. It is the, the oh my goodness. <laughs> There's so much peace and love that has just overflowed into my home. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for it because I have two teenagers. So it's like, I need peace and love. Yes. <laughs> we, yeah, it's, uh, b both of us have noticed in our, uh, you know, the, the overflow in, in our home lives for our respective kids. It's like, it's like a magnet burn. Mm -hmm. It's, they just want to be around it and soak it up. My kids have commented so much to me about how our lives are different now. And it's, 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 it's always such a sobering reminder to me that um, I, I'm humbled. I'm humbled by what I'm able to create for, for my children now. And 
you know, that it was, this was hard, hard earned. It took a lot of painful lessons to get us to this point. And so uh, it's all of it is something that I cherish so much. The, the relationship that, uh, that, that we are creating and the way it shows up at home for me and for my boys and that, you know, that there's a future that is kind of all of us coming together is so beautiful. Uh, last question that I have for you is uh, what would you say to someone who's looking at this and saying all oh, this is bullshit it's not true I mean like can't happen to me yeah of course look at her she's beautiful and this could never happen to me uh, I, I don't know if I can do this uh, somebody who's on the fence about doing this work and is about to either say yes let's go forward or maybe not I mean, it's not for me what would you say to someone like that oh oh my goodness um... I think I would say, first of all, I I get it. Oh my gosh, it brings tears to my eyes. I um, I get it. I remember so well <laughs> what it felt like to um, to be in that place, and because really, that's it, it, it's it's fear. It's fear. It's the what if I never. Mm. This what if I never, and. I would say this, I couldn't see this for me. This was not, I did not go into to, to working with you with really believing in this for me. I took, I took one step and that one step was, I, I owe it to myself and to my kids to, to be me. And, and this person who would hurt and who was afraid of trying and who was protecting herself did not feel like me and I wasn't willing to accept that and I would say take that step take that step to believe in yourself um, you you can do this I, I just I know you can do this do this take that one step and then you see each step of the way what you can do next you know it's it's a different it was a different me that was going out and meeting people and connecting with people than where I was before. <laughs> uh, Rockstar, as we call you all in the group, thank you so <laughs> much for your beautiful heart, for your vulnerability, for stepping into the work so powerfully the way you did. You were such an example for everyone in, in the group and for me. Uh, specifically, I can tell you that I so admire how you've done this and the kind of love that you experience and just seeing you fall in love with this man and just the way he shows up for you, the way you show up for him and it's one of the biggest blessings that I get a chance to experience seeing results like yours and uh, I, there's no words I have to, to thank you for showing up today and for sharing your life experience with those people who, who, who want to hear more about this. So. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you, Bern. I am so grateful to you for the work that you do. I, You inspire me to continue to connect with myself more deeply, and I am forever grateful to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>